This video continues our look at the play framework using Scala. We have our web version 2.0 uh, version of our task list, and we found that it has some shortcomings. One of those major shortcomings is the fact that we have JavaScript that has hard-coded inside of it a bunch of routes. Okay, and that's problematic because if we were to go and change the routes files, so instead of for example, instead of having log in two, I decided this should be B, okay, instead of two or whatnot, then all of this would, all of these routes would, would break, okay? And the way we normally deal with that is we use reverse routing. And so, you know, here, for example, to get to our JavaScript file, we use at routes. Now I'm gonna show you two ways of dealing with this and the first one is not my preferred method, but I think it's educational and it's good for you to understand what's going on. And that is we are going to make a template that generates the JavaScript. Okay, now, we've been using templates that generate HTML, which is why all of our files end with .scala.html, and so they are called and they spit out some HTML. I don't wanna spit out HTML, I wanna spit out JavaScript. So I'm gonna make a new, not a play template. It turns out the play templates are written specifically for the .scala.html. I'm just gonna make this a file. I'm gonna call it generated.js, or generated.js dot scala.js. Okay, similar to the Scala HTML, except this is supposed to spit out a JavaScript file. And it is a twirl template. So it would start with any arguments that I was passing in. I wanna follow the same type of syntax that we had with our other templates. Part of the point here is the fact that twirl templates don't have to be HTML. It's literally just spitting out text, okay? It doesn't care if you have proper HTML here. It just sees things with ampersand, with at, add-ands as being Scala code, and then the rest of it is just plain text, okay? Uh, and that plain text could be JavaScript, okay? So I'm gonna copy this JavaScript over. And what I want to be able to do is to change this login to, ideally we'd be able to change all of these routes so that they were proper, but because this isn't my preferred way, I'm only going to change the login to, plus it turns out that these get parameters will wind up being more challenging, and we'll, we'll, we should spend a, a minute talking about why that is. But I wanna fix this one so that it uses reverse routing. So instead of going to hard coded to slash login to, I want this to go to the routes for login to. So that would be at routes dot task list two dot, and we just called it login there. So now this is a, is a route that will change because it points to the method here, not to this over here. So if I change up my entire API and rename all of the routes that are going to things, this file will spit out the right one. Now, of course, in order to use this file, I actually have to have a method that will generate that view. So we'll call it generated.js being consistent with my naming. And it just gives back a simple okay of views dot. Now every other time we've done views, we've done views.html, but you'll notice there is a views.js. That has the smarts to know that this is intended to be a JavaScript file that is being uh, sent back. So the type which is sent to the in the header information to the browser will say this is not an HTML file, this is a JavaScript file. That's good for the browsers to know because if you're trying to execute something as a script, it should be a script. Now I need a route that points to there. Gen generated JS controllers task list two. generated JS. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and let's hit a refresh over here for my loading. It loads. 
to make it clear what happens if in here, instead of calling this login, I give it the wrong, you know, I have a typo. Uh, okay, what would that do? Well, when I refresh, now I get a compile error. Okay, and I like this. This is what I like about reverse routing, is the fact that if I screw up and mistype something, I actually get a compile error, whereas all of these things, these hard-coded routes, not only don't change when I change the routes file, if I have a typo in them, that typo can be very hard to find, okay? because I have to actually click on that link and then notice that it didn't go to the right place. Okay? So that can be uh, very time intensive to track down that bug. With the reverse routing, it's, it's very easy to find. Now this file isn't being used yet. There's one more thing that we have to put into into place and that is in our version 2 main instead of using version 2.js I need to call generated js so I'm going to comment out the script that we have in here and replace it with a routes of task list two dot generated js. Okay, so now the script that's included is the one that's spit out from this file, which of course it goes to the routes file, it sees generated js, it calls this method here, it goes to the view, and it generates this file but it replaces this with the appropriate route. And if we rerun this, oh, and there again, if I have a typo, like task list two, I find out about it early. Now my page comes up and we can log in and everything is happy. But if we look at the source code now, you can see we have that script commented out and we have this one here. And if we were to click on it, you can see that this has been replaced by a slash login, uh, which is what the, the routes generated for us. Now, why is this not my preferred way of, of doing things? One is I really, I have very mixed emotions, actually, no, I have very negative emotions about files that mix languages. Okay, now, in this case, it's pretty simple because all I'm doing here is routes, but if I were to do more complex logic with for loops and stuff like that, I would be generating JavaScript using Scala code, and so this one file would have code for Scala and code for JavaScript, and I just view that as a recipe for disaster because you have to remember, oh wait, the Scala parts of this are gonna execute on the server and the JavaScript parts of this are gonna execute on the client. And it's just, it's hard to keep things straight. It makes it very difficult to, to work with the code. It also turns out that because things like username and password aren't known until runtime, this is actually much harder to do reverse routing on because if I say out at routes task list and then the stuff for validate. So validate2 should actually be validate, but I have to pass it arguments. And those are, would be arguments that are filled in at uh, compile time. Um, and so and that's a little bit uglier. I guess <laughs> we could try this. Once again, this is JavaScript that we're generating. So I can put JavaScript style comments in here. And uh, we could try to do, whoops, let's do that of uh, at routes dot task list two. Now, the thing is we need, so I need to put in, let's validate with an argument list inside of it. Now, remember this is, because of this at sign here, this is gonna be Scala code. So what goes inside of here? Well, I actually want this to come out as of the username and password that they've typed in at that point. Oh, wait, but that's that's a runtime thing. 
uh, from on the client side that won't that won't be filled in when we generate it on the server. This isn't going to work well. Now, if we were doing these through posts, this would be much easier to do. But it's really not feasible for me to throw into here uh, the username and the password. And this happens on on the server side. So, so there's it. Yeah, this just isn't going to work very well for us. As I said, those are my problems. Now, once again, if we were doing this with, with post requests, we wouldn't have this problem of generating this, um, but we'd still have the problem of we're mixing Scala and JavaScript in the same file, which I think leads to, to lots of confusion and makes things harder to understand. So while I'm gonna leave this around in here, I'm actually going to take our code and go back to the other version where we're just using JavaScript, but I want to somehow get these values in here to be things that are potentially more reverse routed. Uh, we still have the problem here that building a reverse route for something with the username and the password isn't going to work very easily, so we'll have to, to come back to that. Um, but at least you know, we can we can see an, an alternate version of how we would do this where we aren't mixing uh, languages in the same file. We'll do that in the next video.